Hi, welcome to tdcat.com. Today I'm in Lightroom and I want to look at a very quick tutorial on how to create a sort of faded film look. And a, a look that has really nice milky whites is pretty popular at the moment. A lot of people like um, that sort of look. It's kind of, I don't know whether it's come from the, the whole sort of explosion of cameras that allow um, S-Log recording and flat profiles and all this sort of stuff, but um, but... It's a very popular look at the moment to get that kind of faded, um, milky look. So we'll get down to it and show you one way of generating that. There's loads of ways of doing it in Lightroom, so we're just going to look at one way. Right, so here's an image which is really not a very inspiring image at all. It's pretty boring. And it's well, it's nice for me because it's um, because of, of, of my little boy at a party last weekend, and I just grabbed the camera and took it. Looks like it's taken on a phone, but it's actually taken on a 5D at 24 mil. So the first thing I'm going to do is consider my crop. So I'm going to press R on the keyboard to bring up the crop, and I want to get rid of this guy here, and I want to get rid of these people here because they're just sort of distracting. So uh, we'll concentrate the attention on him playing with his cars, something he seems to do all the time. And there you go, that'll do. That's a reasonable crop. So the first thing, uh, out, apart from the crop, the first thing in actually creating the image is to go down to our tone curve. And if you're in a more recent version of Lightroom, you might find that your tone curve is set up like this with highlights, darks, lights and shadows. Uh, so just if you press this here, you'll get a nice RGB setup standard RGB curve. I don't think it actually matters for, um, for doing this, but um, gives uh, different settings on here you know you have preset kind of lines and stuff so just to get it back to the standard RGB curve just click this button here is there a keystroke for that no and of course what, what we want to do is we want to bring up our blacks so that the lowest black can only be this kind of gray really and we want to bring down our white so the highest white can only be a sort of gray as well and that cre that creates that sort of milky look uh, that we're talking about so if I just bring this up slightly like this and then bring this down we start to immediately get that kind of washed out look that's really popular and I also need to bring the exposure up because the exposure is way off on this so we'll bring this uh, exposure up here and what you'll see is that because of that work we've done on the curve there outside of the basic sliders our histogram is now sliced it's almost like brick wall limiting you know it's like just cut off here and cut off here there is no there is no getting any further than that you know for the see what i mean all the movement is within those two points and that's the good thing about the curves because the sliders here they have a certain intelligence behind how they work and they'll they won't sort of limit the histogram in that way but if you do want that hard fast limiting on the uh, on the histogram then it's uh, always good to do it in the curves I find so what was I doing then exposure so put the exposure up like this maybe something like just a stop or so and I'm gonna drop the saturation for now because I want to kind of work on this as if it was going to be a black and white but I won't make it a black and white eventually that's a bit boring isn't it everyone does black and white so how how washed out do we want it? Something like that. Let's bring a bit of contrast back into it by making this into an S curve. Just a very slight, very slight curve on that. And then we st it starts to already look a little bit more uh, sort of authentic, kind of a bit more filmy, you know, all that sort of nonsense. Um, but hey, as long as it's the look that you want and it's the look that works for you, that's what counts here. And that's why I did it with this particular picture, because I liked it. Sharpening, I would drop down to nothing, because we don't want any... Sometimes digital cameras are a little bit too sharp, and they just it, they just look unnatural as a result uh, on certain shots. So I drop the sharpening down so there's no additional sharpening. Vignetting, yep, we'll have some of that. Not too much, just enough to... Um, Drop these levels down a little bit around the edges. Could use a radial filter for that as well, but Vignetting's fine because he's pretty central in the picture. And now grain. Yes, of course we want some grain, but for grain I'm going to zoom into uh, the actual, <coughs> excuse me, the actual full 
size image. And don't overdo it, it's a bit like sharpening. If you see as much as you want, maybe back off a little bit after it. Um, so you kind of put it up and then think, and then just maybe take it back just a touch. So yeah, those kind of settings around sort of 30s are usually okay for grain. And what I'm gonna do now, go back to the top and I'm going to make some adjustments to the color, some fixed adjustments to the color. I'm gonna drop, uh, sorry, I'm gonna increase my aqua here and my blue. And I'm gonna decrease my purple and my magenta. And then I'm gonna just slowly bring back the saturation. And maybe put it something like that. Now it looks a bit cool, the image. So I'm gonna push the temperature of the image up. Is that enough? Something like that, and maybe a little bit less saturation. And is that, is that enough? Maybe drop the highlights a bit on his face. And there we go. I mean, that's not too bad. That's, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. So if we just, uh, just do a quick reset and have a look at the original. Yeah, quite a difference and just gives you that sort of authentic uh, film type look together with those milky blacks. Now, of course, you can adjust how, how much you want to drop those out. You know, you can really, really make those disappear by pushing, move, by moving this point here on the curve. I think that's enough. So we just basically got a, an S curve here and just sort of taken it on its side and rotated it round and so cut off our highlights and cut off our blacks and uh, got what I think is quite a nice look. Hope that's useful and I will catch you soon. Bye.